Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about two different lenses for the Micro Four Third system and then also comparing them to an equivalent on full frame. These two lenses are at least natively the widest rectilinear lenses you can get in the ultra wide family. And we're talking about the 7.5 millimeter lens from Laowa at f2 and the 7 to 14 millimeter lens from the Lumix G Vario uh, minimum aperture of f4. Now for a while, Laowa was toting that their 7.5 millimeter was the widest rectilinear lens uh, in the world for micro four thirds. I've had a couple comments saying that you could adapt other lenses from outside the system that are wider, but let's stick to the native lens mounts uh, for this video comparison anyway. Now I've had both of these lenses um, in my possession when I was on Micro Four Thirds because I did a lot of real estate photography. So uh, I was in the unique scenario where I can kind of compare them in identical scenarios. So we're gonna be looking at two photos of the exact same tripod height, exact same camera settings, uh, just with the lens swap to see what the difference is. Now, the Laowa 7.5 millimeter uh, has a field of view of 110 degrees, and the Lumix G Vario has a field of view of 114 degrees. So we opened up our photos into Lightroom, and this first one here is the uh, Lumix 7 to 14. Obviously, we're keeping it at the seven millimeters. Uh, and again, on Micro Four Thirds, that is the equivalent of 14 millimeters, when, because the crop factor is two. So we can see here, which is ideal, is that we have both corners in frame, uh, which for real estate is really how you want to show rooms uh, for most of your shots. You want to be able to see both corners, you know, to get the full perspective of what the room looks like. And you can do that because the field of view is 114 degrees on the seven millimeter. Now moving on over to Laowa's 7.5 millimeter, you just lose this corner. It is like right there, but you do lose a little bit of that information. So someone who's looking might not know that the corner is right there and that there could be more room after that, which isn't the end of the world or anything, but it is just that little bit of extra information that is good to have when deciding between these two things. Uh, so the Laowa 7.5 millimeter is at a hundred and ten degrees field of view. Uh, honestly, the quality of the photos image wise, unless we were to get a little bit closer, they look nearly identical. And I, I want to reiterate that I uh, kept the camera at the exact same settings. These were at F eight, uh, near infinity of focus distance and the ISO was at 200. So they had the same exact settings. They were on the same exact spot on the tripod. I did not move it. All I did was swap lenses. Yeah, so that that is just a little bit different. So Laowa was claiming to have the widest, and they probably did at some point. I think uh, quite possibly the 7 to 14 came later, and maybe Laowa was just claiming it for prime lenses because the 7 to 14 is obviously a zoom lens. Now it is a good bit more expensive. The seven to 14 millimeter is around $800 when I bought it and the Lawa is $500. So that is something to keep in mind, whether that's important to you or not, but being able to also have a 28 millimeter lens might be compelling to you. And the fact that you get a little extra field of view. So that's what it looks like on micro four thirds. Now, while I got you here, uh, I moved on from Micro Four Thirds to full frame. The I got the Lumix S5, and on full frame, I want you to see the difference on Micro Four Thirds versus full frame. You get a little bit more field of view, it seems, on full frame. Even though they're supposed to both be 114, I'm not sure exactly what happened here. I kept the tripod, same exact spot. I just uh, put the S5 on instead of the G9 that I was shooting with earlier. And you can very clearly see that there is a little bit more room in this shot. Just a little bit. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how to explain that, but there it is. Maybe it has something to do with the unreliable crop factor or not. But uh, also, I want you to look at the dynamic range difference. I kept the settings exactly the same. And I, they, it, the, the sensor is much larger, so it has much more dynamic range. This shot, unedited, is like really bright still. 
it looks good and I didn't change anything about it. And if I were to edit it, which I'll show you right now, it looks great. It just looks so much better. So um, I know this was more about what the lenses look like on Micro Four Thirds, but it also is something to consider uh, whether it's not worth it or not to you to get a full frame sensor uh, to get that extra dynamic range because it really does make a huge difference from the get-go on your photos. Granted, you can edit the photos to look a little better, but uh, you can only push them so far. And the less you have to push them, the better in editing. Uh, they'll just look like higher quality photos. So that's it for this comparison. Uh, let me know what you think below. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Uh, I know there's someone out there who's trying to compare these two lenses and well, there you go. That's your comparison. We'll see you in the next one, guys.